Nikon announces the Z5. It's a solid camera, it's well built, and it offers a good range of capabilities. But is it priced to excite? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, including gear discussed, are placed in the description down below along with the current contest details for this Canon 50mm lens. Nikon announced the Z5. It's a very good camera. It's a solid camera and the price will surprise you, but I'll save that to the last chapter. The Z5 comes with a 24.3 full-frame CMOS sensor, but it doesn't come with a backlit sensor like the Z6. But having the same processor as the Z6 makes the Z5 fast, and that's a big plus. The autofocus is very good. Nikon's right up there with Canon and Sony for accuracy. Now the Nikon Z5 does include animal eye detection, which does also include humans. Now animal eye detection is fast becoming a must. Capturing a family pet has never been easier. Previously, this was like shooting the wings off a fly at 3,000 feet. No more spray and pray, and with a max of 4.5 frames per second, you'd have to do an awful lot of praying. I do prefer 7 frames per second. 4.5 isn't bad, but it makes getting fast action shots, shots a little more difficult and time consuming. I'd like to see 7 frames per second as a minimum frame rate. The Z5 has two UHS-2 card slots, but we get that tilt screen. I'd much rather prefer a flip screen over two card slots any day. You see, when shooting video, that flip screen makes a huge difference. And I'm not referring to YouTube videos like this, where I have a teleprompter which completely blocks it anyways. I'm talking about shooting video for the ordinary filmmaker, shooting over a crowd or getting in those low shots. The flip screen is much more versatile. And for video shooters, dual card slots rarely mean shooting to both cards at the same time, especially at this price point. That's usually a feature left for photos. Mirrorless cameras are often criticized for their battery life or lack thereof, rarely getting more than about 400 shots on a single charge. Video-wise, the Z5 does well, providing about an hour of use before being depleted, which is common with most, cam most mirrorless cameras in this price range. For external use, however, one can use a battery grip or charge the camera through a USB-C connection. And yes, you can charge the camera while shooting, which is a huge plus. The Nikon Z5 will start at $1399.95. Canon's about to lower the price of the ESR to $1499.99. The Z5 is better than the EOS R in some respects, and it should be as it's, well, it's two years newer. But in many other ways, they're comparable, and in some ways, the EOS R is better. So considering the price, the Z5 isn't unreasonable, but it's not a steal either. There's a lot to choose from at this price point. The Z6 is only $400 more and a far more capable camera and my preferred choice over these two cameras. And with a rumored update to the Z6 and Z7 this fall, I'd be a little bit less willing to commit right now. Now had the Z5 been priced closer to $1,000, my recommendation would be different. The Z5 though is a good solid camera. Other cameras in this price range include the Canon 90D, an APS-C camera but so feature rich it's tempting. The Z50 can be had for $859. And on the high side, we have the X-T4. Yes, it's a more expensive camera like the Z6, but way better value. And then, of course, we have the Canon RP for $999. And yes, that is a full-frame CMOS sensor camera, too. As a consumer, you have a lot to choose from. Wait a few more months, and that choice will only get better. Nikon, Panasonic, and Sony are all about to release new cameras. But that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win this Canon 50mm lens. Thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.